They want us to believe that we are becoming overwhelmed, that they can overwhelm us. You see, but they are paranoid. They are more paranoid than any of us are, no matter what happens to us. Because, see, they have to put people in here to come and listen to what we're saying so they can go back and tell. So they're afraid. They're afraid because they know we're talking about reality. Now, why are they afraid? They are afraid because they know that they are dealing with the illusions of power, which are based on the realities of violence and brutality. They're afraid. See, they don't want people to think. They don't want people to be talking, and they don't want people to think about what they talk about because they know. They've known it all along that they built their whole thing on illusions. And because they have drawn us into giving this illusionary world all this power, they have taken our power away from us because we believe in the illusions. It's going to be real hard for us to get our way back. We have to deal with the economics. We have to deal with the politics. We have to deal with the whole nuclear madness. But we're going to have to purify and cleanse our spirit a little bit, our resistance, movements. We have to think real seriously about movements. See, movements make up a resistance. We have to be very careful in, as how we organize because they're counting on us to react the same way we did in the 60s and the 70s. You think that this energy crisis and you think that this economic inflation thing, you think it's an accident? You think it just happened? They saw in the 60s that the American people were becoming more liberal because they were becoming more affluent. And because they were becoming more affluent, they were starting to say, well, equal rights for the blacks. The young people were starting to say, well, it doesn't matter what you look like. We all have a worth. And then that led up to where everybody started saying the war in Vietnam is wrong. The other side, they saw that all of these conclusions were based on a level of affluency that was reaching the average American, and the average American was becoming more liberalistic in their thinking because they were getting this affluency. So they're getting even. They've had a redistribution of the wealth. They did it through energy, through oil, to make the people more poor. They did it. That's what Watergate was all about. <laughs> While everybody was looking at Richard Nixon and did he or didn't he, they had a redistribution of the wealth and the price of gasoline and bread went up 100%. See, now, if you didn't have Nixon to look at and be concerned about, then maybe you all would not have allowed them to raise these prices. See, but by the time that they got the prices raised by 100%, it was too late for the American people to ever recover and deal with it. They're getting even for the 60s and the 70s. Count on it. It's not an accident. You've got a racist, class, sexist, ruling class power structure that exists in the world, and it's composed of heavy industrialists, the people who are, who are part machine. And they intend that they're going to keep their hold on the world economics. We live in, an, in a machine world, an industrialized world. We got to deal with race. Two-thirds of the world's natural resources are on non-white land because that's where two-thirds of the world population is. One-third of the world's resources, because of technology coming out of the white land, one-third of the world's resources are almost totally used up. But technology spreads like any disease. Technology spreads. So this two-thirds, this two-thirds with the majority of the world's population, they got all the natural resources. So at some point in the immediate future, they're going to have all the technology, which makes them the new machine power. And it changes the whole thing around, but like they did to us. When they wanted our land in the Dakotas, they used their technology to stay ahead. They came and they gave us a few Winchester repeating rifles because they had Gatling guns. And then they could justify their murder, see, because America, the hypocrisy is they must arm you before they murder you. So that was how they went about it. We look at today and now, by creating a dependency on nuclear power, nuclear energy, by creating a dependency upon that, there's only a handful of countries that control the mass, the mechanism of mass production of this. All the countries in the world don't. And you watch where the nuclear bombs are going. They're going to places like Africa and the Middle East. And they're going to give some of these people some bombs in the hopes, and they'll even have some of these people drop one of these atom bombs on each other one of these days. See, they can afford to hand the bombs out there because these nations have no capability of delivering the bomb back to where it came from, be it the Soviet Union or America. They create a dependency on nuclear energy. Then everybody has to adjust their needs, see, and we stay dependent. 
And then through the end of it, before it's done, they intend to use their nuclear energy to be able to step into the net, into the third world and take the natural resources. It's all got to do with economics and racist power trips that have been in existence since before Christ. There's no need for it because of electricity, you know, for us to survive and resist. We are going to have to understand and recognize that we are energy because we are a natural part of the creation. And if we are going to effectively stand up to our enemy, we're going to have to be able to do it based upon our connection to the real truth, to reality. Our enemy is abusing, is abusing the earth. Our enemy abuses us, abuses all of the sacred things of life. But we are an extension of the earth. We are energy and we are spirit. Before we will be strong enough to fight and stand up to the enemy, we are going to have to evaluate how we use our own energy. Are we misusing our own energy? Are we misusing ourselves? Because we've got to deal with that before we can deal with being misused by someone else. Alternative energy. We are alternative energy. We are it. We have power. We must gear ourselves for a long struggle. We must never give up hope. We must never turn our back on it and say we're not going to make it. Because those who turn their back and say we're not going to make it, then they're not going to. That's it for them. But the spirit of the people, the spirit of the people, the spirit of the earth. We live in a natural world. We go through, we go through lives. All of our ancestors who were here before us, all of our relations who were here with us and went into the spirit world, see, they didn't go to heaven or hell. They're here. They are spirit power. We connect with them. They will help us. They will help us to survive this thing, this madness that is coming, this machine madness that is being imposed upon all of us. What we must do is we must seriously think and consider our situation today as human beings. Because we're talking about sexism and ageism and racism and classism. We're talking about a nuclear attack against the earth. We're talking about a lot of things. They want to confuse us with nuclear bombs. They want to confuse us with the draft. They want to confuse us with the whole economics. But we must put, take a little bit of time every day anyway and put some of that confusion to the side and think about who we are in relationship to the earth. The earth has the ability to heal, and the earth has the ability to help us. The earth is power. We're looking to the wrong source for our power. And the more we look to the wrong source, the more powerless we become. And they will attack. You take that flower power movement that was in the middle 60s. These were young white people coming out of middle America. And these were the ones that were saying, it doesn't matter what you look like or how you dress or how much money you make. And they became a threat to America. So America attacked them. America attacked them with LSD and speed and heroin and drugs. America took them and discredited them and said, said they're no longer flower power children who come from your middle class homes. They are drug addicts. And they had a generation gap. See, but everybody was so caught up in mind expansionism and idealism, they said, well, the LSD is a good thing for us and we really want it because it helps us to grow and see. But I consider it to be an act of war. The CIA was experimenting with LSD for specifically for that purpose, to use it in chemical warfare. And they saw a whole segment of the American public was turning, turning into a, a consciousness that talked about true human life values, so they dropped their LSD bomb. You see, because mind expansion and consciousness alteration was taking place. That's what the civil rights movement was. That's what the flower power movement was. That's what the anti-war movement was. It was people whose minds and their consciousness was expanding and starting to become more realistic. So they turned around and they dropped a few things on us to divert our energy. So we have, we have to be very careful. We must always think. We must always look to see because there's an answer for everything that is going on if we are willing to take the time to look for it and to see it. We are power. We are energy. We are spirit. We are the people. We want to be free. We want our liberation. Then we must take the responsibility that goes with liberation and freedom.